Hello everyone, welcome back to Court of Swords, episode 62. We're going into part two here. Uh, Adam, what's going on? So let's let's jump ahead. Um, Berg, you have you have fully recovered your mental faculties uh, in so much as they stand. And the group of you uh, awaken one morning uh, as the, uh, the sun rises on the desert to uh, the sounds of approaching an approaching caravan. Um, you hear pack animals uh, lowing, you can hear footsteps, you hear people talking, um, and you hear uh, the monk, left alone, uh, shout a greeting in Orcish. Um, uh, Berg, you're the, are you the only one that speaks Orcish in the party? I would I imagine so. Oh, there you go. I, I speak yeah. as well. I think we all speak it, actually. Oh, there you go. Good. So, okay. No, no. Yeah, so not, <laughs> not so much, Berg. Everyone um, knows what's going on. <laughs> so, yeah, he just, he just shouts... Um, uh, Sothe, Mogok, so good to see you. Ha, you're a bit late, but I knew you'd come. Uh, and he, he's saying this in Orcish. Uh, and, um, yeah, and, uh, yeah, you hear the sound of the caravan arriving. Uh, you're all inside, because that's where you sleep. Um, and it's, it's dawn uh, of the day. What are you going to do? I think we go, or at least I get, get up. Yeah, I, I turn yeah, to the group. And, I turn to the group and say, we, we should go stand behind the monk as they approach. We'll have him intro us so get ready let's go outside uh, agreed okay mm -hmm. all right so you you head outside and yeah we see a group of at a glance probably like a hundred or so uh orcs uh they uh they walk carrying uh carrying spears uh some ride on massive uh strange furry megafauna uh, there are these sort of sloth-like creatures with big lower tusks that are carrying uh, ju enormous jugs of water uh, on their back. Um, yeah, there's like like a dozen families uh, of orcs of all sorts. Uh, some of them appear to be warriors. Uh, others, we see them carrying uh, carrying children. Uh, there are uh, orcs, young and old, um, men and women, and they're all they're all rolling up. Uh, with their their trade caravan, and at the front, uh, you see uh, two uh, two Orcish women. Um, one that's about like your age, like thirties, uh, if she were a human, um, and then another that's like somewhat older. Um, and they look uh, they look like they're they're related, um, and uh, they both wear uh, the same uh, like face like markings. Uh, they have a, a either tattoo or paint. Uh, marking like a white set of like sort of claw lines down their face and onto their neck. Um, and uh, they're talking and the, the younger one is like smiling and she, she grabs the monk and pulls him into a big hug uh, as the group of you uh, walk up. Um, I, I kind of like kick sand over towards Calumet. This is you. Tell, tell him to introduce us. I will. I'm just waiting for them to. I don't want to interrupt their embrace. Yeah, so they they're just talking. Uh, you know, he uh, he's asking about her children, and uh, and and she's like, oh, you know, um, the Bortok uh, has learned the spear, the sword, and the mace. Uh, he just earned his uh, his his first tusk, uh, and they're yeah, they're just like sh shooting the shit like old friends. Uh, I, th I think and... I keep looking at Kalimat, like seeing if he's gonna interject, and after about like. Seven or eight glances, I just go, Berg is an orc. <laughs> <laughs> and so they all they all kind of look like Berg looks at you too around, like <laughs> And they both they both turn and um uh the woman, the younger woman, uh puts her puts her hand to uh to her, her heart uh and says to you, uh Berg, uh she uh she says um uh, fortuitous meeting warrior and it's like a general kind of like I don't know what clan you're part of I don't know your status or in the hierarchy so it's a general kind of like I mean Kalimat knows this Berg may not so yeah fortuitous meeting warrior and she walks over to you and puts her, her hand out yeah it's like nice to meet you as well and like you know extends his hand out as well yeah, is it the hand with the the like a bracer on it? Yeah, probably. <laughs> okay, she looks down at it, 
and uh, she draws her axe. Before uh, you, old, before and older, I interrupt, the older like, woman like kicks her out, and they like the they they're far enough away from the tribe that it doesn't spread quite yet. But she sees snarls. She pulls it out and she looks at probably Ramus, like she's gonna kill you. Yeah, yeah. I step back. This will be interesting. Before, <laughs> and I and this is all in Orcish, um, mm -hmm. and it's it's kind of broken. Please, weapons uh, away. A uh, Berg is not. Uh, uh, slave for us. Kill them. Berg is <laughs> <laughs> and then Berg, right after he says that, just starts. Save me. Uh, Berg, after he, he does say that, but after he says that, he just starts laughing. He's like, <laughs> they are fine. Yeah, uh, and I, I kind of drop the orcish for a second. Um, do you speak common? She says in Orcish, uh, we have forsworn the slaver's tongue. And she says, like, scowls at you. Can you make a persuade check? Do it with advantage, because Berg's helping you. You betcha. Oh, my. Cool. Advantage. Make up that, that advantage. advantage. <laughs> Jesus Christ, man. <laughs> yeah, you got a five wow. and a one on those two dice. Um, yeah, so she, she holds her axe. And when you, when you uh, yeah, you say that, she says, we've forsaken the slaver's tongue. And she, she looks at uh, Berg uh, and she says to you, Berg, she says, um, these men don't, these men don't believe they own you. You are free. Berg nods. Free. Well, sort of. <laughs> and she, she looks at the, the bracer and she shakes her head and uh, she, she walks over and she she's got her axe in one hand and she, she grabs you kind of by the like the scruff of the neck not aggressively but like a like pay attention to me kind of grab you you get mm -hmm. a, the impression this is a cultural thing you're not picking up on uh, you can feel her fingernails like dig into your into your muscle your shoulder and she looks at you uh and she says um there is no shame in wearing the unbreakable shackle many in our tribe still carry it the elders she shakes her head uh, and she says it is not your shame to bear but theirs. And she she looks at Ramus, but doesn't mean Ramus. She means like humans. Yeah. I've uh, worn it for a while. That's all he says. <laughs> She's yeah. kind of like I, I chime she, in uh, from yeah. the background and say, we, in Orcish, we've been trying to take it off for quite some time. If you have any ideas or tips, by all means. She, uh, she shakes her head and she, she turns and you see the older woman uh, coming up and she's like rolled up her like desert robes and she, she holds up her arm and you can see this like just ancient bracer uh, exactly like yours, uh, rusted and, and uh, scratched. Uh, and the, the woman, uh, she says, um, I have worn this since I was a child. It cannot be broken by any ways known to us. But just because you wear it does not mean you cannot be free. I hope that you have bathed in the blood of the men who put that on you. Mm. Some of them, no doubt. But one. I live for the day I stand above him, drenched in his blood, as he draws his final breath. She nods and her, her hair kind of falls in her face. She's got these, um, like her, her hair is all braided and, and in this big, like kind of pile on the back of her head, but a few pieces sort of fall down and she, she nods and they, they swing in the desert air. And she says, um, uh, she says, I will pray to the father of black sand when we get to the deep desert. Whose name shall I give him, warrior? What do you call yourself? Berg. She grins, a strong name. I am Tribe Mother Sothe. This is my daughter, Tribe Mother Mogok. This is our tribe. And you look back, and, and like the tribe is kind of settling in. They're taking some of the water supplies off, finding some shade, um, pulling out, their, uh, pulling out their, their tents, and kind of getting set up. And uh, she, she says, yeah, she says to you, I guess, um, Mo so Sothe goes to um, take care of some, some setup, but um, Mogok stays to talk to you. Um, so Mogok is, uh, 
on the scale of of like how much like an orc she looks her and her mother both look quite orcish um they have very prominent uh, bottom jaws they both have tusks um they have the kind of deep green uh deep green skin of a, a certain subset of orcs but the tribe itself as you look around varies uh you see uh some kids playing and uh two of them are a kind of like paler green uh, they have the the sort of more human ears, but they still have the sort of pronounced jaw. Uh, you see a, a girl that looks pretty much human, uh, except she has uh, the the red eyes uh, of an orc. Um, and uh, yeah, and so this this tribe starts to settle in. Uh, and, and Mogok says to you, uh, Berg, uh, she says, um, "Left alone tells me." And she she doesn't speak anything but Orcish. So you have to tell me if you want to like speak to her in a different language. But she says. Um, yeah. Speaking of uh, yeah, she says, um, left alone tells us that he found you wandering the desert, that you came here by some sign. How did you find yourselves in this place? Where is the rest of your tribe, Berg? I have no tribe. Hmm. Every orc has a tribe. Maybe yours is just lost for now. Hmm. If I did... I, I don't even remember. He like thinks back, like trying to remember, like way back, like just he just gets like flashes of you know, distant you know relatives in, his, in the last moments that he saw them, and he just doesn't remember because it was so long ago. Yeah, she uh, she says uh, the sun is shining. There's a breeze in the desert. This is not a time to speak of old hard memories. If you wish, speak to Sothe later. She is uh shaman of our tribe and might be able to help you remember if you wish to and she turns and in, in orcish uh she she says uh, to sully kalimad and, and ramus uh, as a group and she says and who are you <clears throat> and of course in orcish and it's it's not great it's it's passable but it's not great um my name is kalimad alfida these uh friends with Berg. We are lost, found here. Um, met, left alone. Need travel to city. She's grinning when you when you're talking. Yeah, no, I, I, to, I'm looking at you with like a like, furrowed brow, and I turn and it's, say, "It's in Orcish, so like." Well, I turn and say, "Like that's the thing. It's 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 like I I know it, but I I mean it's 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 odd. It's a weird on my tongue to speak it. Yeah, Bert, and Bert also like this. I hope that my charisma like is is oh yeah noticeably yeah. like I'm really and that's and that's hard. what she and that's what she says right. Like Orcish is a language that's meant to be spoken by Orcish mouths and humans and dragonborn don't have the lower jaw structure or the like lung capacity for speaking orcish properly so you're kind of like mumbling your way through the words but you're getting the message across and she, she uh, mogok turns to you berg uh and uh, and she says uh your friend speaks like a child but he's handsome is he, he married tries. Mm, i don't know I could use a pretty thing like him in my harem. Are you for sale, Kalimat? Well, that thousand gold. Gold. <laughs> I just speak up above everyone and say one thousand gold. <laughs> and she she walks over to you while she's talking, and what like maybe started as a like joke, she's she's continuing with it. So she walks over, and she like like smells you, and kind of like walks around looking you up and down, like one might look at a horse. Mm -hmm. Will you take I that off? I, 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 I uh, volunteer. Oh, sorry. <laughs> There's a lot of crosstalk. Right? Yeah, no, no. I just say, will you take that offer? I don't know what everyone else is saying. Right, you said a thousand gold. Yeah. Uh, yeah. As as she's looking at me like, like a horse, I I look at her straight in the eye and I I open my mouth, <laughs> for my teeth. <laughs> she uh, Good I think deal. she just reaches up. She reaches up and really gently just like closes your mouth with her with her hand, like on your uh, like under your chin, uh, and you feel her her nails. She's a big scary like orc nails. You feel them like brush against your Adam's apple. She looks at you and uh, she says quietly, um, 
Uh, she says, uh, the caravan will be here for several days. Mine is the biggest tent. Come and find me. And she turns and like walks over to Sully and Ramus. Now, would I like, <clears throat> would I consider, I'm not, I'm not sure how I would feel about orcish attractiveness. Mm -hmm. Would she be considered like an attractive orc? Uh, like among orcs. Uh, so orc, uh, the orc physical property varies dramatically, right? Like, okay. I mean, as with humans, but in the addition that, and we've talked about this a little bit before, like what, what humans consider an orc, um, is like anyone with orcish blood and by extension right. orcs, as long as you have <laughs> some connection to orcish, uh, heritage in you, you can be welcomed into a clan. So like her tribe or her clan contains people with varying degrees of orcishness um so really it's just about how much you find like tall muscular women with tusks attractive um okay. she's powerful right she's a tribe mother she's kind of like the co-boss of this clan so any any orcish man would be honored to be her husband okay. um and that's more of more of what i was getting to was in my knowledge of orcish culture would yeah she'd be considered a prize uh yes yeah yeah she would be yeah. the kind of woman who would not just have one husband she's probably got six or seven already and kids okay. by many of them and they all serve her in a different way um you get the impression that she's like looking at you as one might a pretty ring or a necklace that one might flaunt around and be like look at this lovely sapphire i own pet pet and the thing is like i, can, I think cali <laughs> happy to play that part for a day or two if he needs to absolutely uh -huh. He's adventurous, man. It's adventure, dude. I, I don't think I've ever yeah. mated with an orc. No, I know a few <laughs> humans that kind of resembled orcs, but... <laughs> yeah, right? So she, she walks past you, and she walks over to, to Ramus and uh, <clears throat> Sully Hoffa, and, um, and she says to, uh, she says to you, uh, Sully, um, you look like one of the inhabitants of Kachua, but... I, am... I see flippers. Yes, I am of a different... I hesitate, try to sit there and translate on the fly. Different variety, one could say. A tribe takes all kinds. Is that where you're going? The fortress that walks? I think about that for a second. Have I heard of the fortress that walks? Uh, make a history roll. Nine? No. Mm, mm -mm. So that's how it... Nope, me neither. <laughs> Not even less, Kalimai. Yeah, yeah. So I, I'm, I ponder for a second. So that's how they... Hmm, interesting. No, I do not plan to... I look around. Maybe. We'll see. I have a quick question before you address this one. It says... Uh, I point towards uh, Ramus. Who would you say the... Yeah, she, she, says, she says to you, uh, le left alone is going to catch you a... I think it's a fool's errand, but he can't be reasoned with. Hmm. And then she turns uh, and she sneers at you, Ramus, and she says, and who are you, human? I am Ramus Cornelius Krill. I am, and I say the orcish word for two warriors bonded by battle with orc, mm. with Berg. We fought many battles together, he and I. She, uh, she turns to Berg uh, and, like, for confirmation, she says, Berg, Berg? just goes, is this is this man your and then like the word? Yeah. Uh, then her her told her whole attitude changes towards you, Ramus. She um she puts her hand to her chest and like bows slightly to you, uh and uh, and she says um, if you are sworn to the tribe, then you are part of the tribe. I greet you, Ramus Cornelius Krill. I am Mogok, tribe mother. I mimic her uh, ge her gestures and like it's an honor to meet you as well. I am surprised. When I saw a human here, I thought I might hate you. But if you are with Berg and his unusual companions, then I think we'll get along fine. I, have, I am no fan much... of humans. I'm no <laughs> fan of humans myself. We get along in that regard. She, uh, she nods and she says, well, you'll find few of them out here in the desert. Give it time. His tongue will get him in trouble. I have a quick question, if you don't mind. I kind of like, I, I reach out you, to like grab her. 
or like right. tap as, her you, shoulder. as you're saying that, like you see, so you say his tongue will get him in trouble. She she casts a look over at Kalimat and she says, "It's not his tongue I'm interested in." And then wink back at you. The hardest <laughs> wink. <laughs> you're just there being all coquettish, like yeah. Hey girl. <laughs> so oh, she, she looks back at you, casts all these. So you're like, I, I wanted to ask you something. Yes. Uh, who would mm, the sage of the caravan? Do you have one? Uh, she nods. Yes. My mother, Sothe, she manages the records, carries I, our tribe's story. Well, she's in mid-conversation. I just walk off and go find <laughs> this, this person. <laughs> she, yeah, she laughs uh, and she says, I've never seen a total in a hurry before. And then she turns and um, we see somebody like hammering a, a, the stake in for a tent. And she goes, she's like, ah, I, have to, I have to do everything myself and starts shouting at him. And, uh, and then we, we get the kind of montage of them building camp. And by the time, uh, by the time the sun is partway up in the sky, the, uh, the camp has been built around this, uh, this tower and there are tents and, uh, the pack animals have found some rest and they're, they're drinking from, uh, one of the, the massive urns of, uh, of water that they carry with them. Um, and yeah, you're now surrounded by this like tiny kind of nomadic community of orcs. Um, Sully, it sounds like you were, you were headed somewhere. Why don't we start with you? Okay. Yeah, I'm headed. Do so you want to go the, and talk to Sothe? Uh, yeah, yeah. Let's go, uh, go talk to her. I'll go, I'll go with you. Okay. okay. So the two of you, uh, approach Sothe's tent. It is a, uh, a dark, um, like a skin tent, like a hide tent. Uh, outside there is a, um, uh, like a totem, like a, sp a spike with some bones, um, bird feathers, and like a skull uh, on it. Uh, the skull is marked with a, um, it's an orc skull, and it's marked with a uh, red, um, like orcish rune, uh, some shamanistic rune indicating something. Uh, you okay. can make a religion check, maybe, if you want to. Uh, I can help, I guess. I'm... Well, I have a seven. Okay. I'm, I might actually be better at this than you. Get a good one. I mean, you're both doing it because you're keeping it yourself. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You both you both recognize it as part of the the Orcish religious tradition. Um, Ramus, you don't recognize the exact symbol. Um, you know that it refers to one of their like one of their great spirits. Um, the one of the the spirits of the orcs worship. Uh, Sally Hoffa, you recognize it more specifically. Um, the symbol marks Sothe as a uh, a, sh a shaman, a priestess. Uh, of an entity called the Father of Black Sand, um, a desert god, a god of um, uh, heat, uh, a god of fire, uh, a god of the like movement of the earth, a uh, sort of tectonic magma god, sometimes depicted as a uh, a great black worm, um, and uh, yeah, and so she she is a, a shaman or a, a priestess of this this entity, uh, and this the symbol is holy to him. Okay. Um, yeah. Do we? You're you're headed with me, Ramus. You said, "Yeah." Okay. Um, yeah, we we enter. Um, is there anyone okay. to stop us? Is there like a gatekeeper nope. there? No, she doesn't have guards. But yeah, you you just like pop into the tent. <laughs> There's probably okay. a discussion. So she's like, in the middle. Do we do we knock? But how do how do we enter? Into this? <laughs> she's Ramis in the she's in, in the middle. She's in the middle of a, the end of a conversation with a, a <gasps> young a, a young warrior, an orc uh, an orc warrior. Who uh, he has his his head shaved into a um, like a braided mohawk, and he has lots of scars, and not like whip scars on his back, but like like a huge bite mark on his shoulder, um, and the scars of like uh, someone who who does battle. Um, he has a, a, a belt pouch of uh, of javelins um, and a hand axe uh, on his belt, and she's she's saying to him, um, she's saying uh, when we reach when we reach the deep desert. I will commune with the father and we will know what to do with your brother. And he snarls uh, and he says, I'm tired of waiting, priestess. I need to know now he has to be freed. And, uh, and she says, all in good time. Blood of three ravens will be freed, I promise you. And he turns and he snarls and he like pushes past the two of you. And he, he spits like some, some like curse at you, like out of my way, softlings, uh, and like shoves you away and walks past. Okay. Yeah, I um, look at him as he walks by and turn to her. Trouble in paradise, I assume. So they, uh, so they says, uh, there is no paradise. And that is just an angry young man 
who has been dealt a bad hand by the spirits. Hmm. You should introduce him to Berg. He might be able to talk some sense into him. Perhaps. Perhaps. But I think you are here in my tent not to dispense advice to me. You're looking for something. This is true. I apologize. I am Sally Hafasunu, and this is Ramus. I do not... I look at him and I'm like, Ramus, what did you follow me for? <laughs> <laughs> I want to talk to this person. It's like she's a worshiper of the gods. You know, different kind of gods, and I was curious. I see. Well, I'm speaking with her first, and I step forward and say, <laughs> Damn, Fine. It was all the same. <laughs> <laughs> and say, Forgive my ignorance, but would it be safe to say that you are the smartest one of the caravan? She, she chuckles, and she says, In what ways do you measure these things? How am I to know? I said, I sit for a second and kind of like look up at the, the skies if I'm trying to posit a question um, and then look back down and just ask like a really simple math problem. <laughs> right. It's math. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, well, why don't you, why don't you make a, I mean, how, how simple is it? Like give me a DC just for solving it. Okay, this is better. Yeah, I ask a DC 15 math problem. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right. Let's see if she can answer it. So she 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 listens to you uh, to you speak. Oh and my god! She fucking god. blows it out of the water. <laughs> <laughs> she gives me like an answer and then posits a question to me. And yeah, I'm totally. Like... <laughs> so she she answers it a bunch of different like a couple of different ways, right? She's like, if you apply the principles of like Doron the Brave, then it, you'll understand that looking at it this way. And so she she ends up like positing that the question itself is flawed in a way that you didn't consider beforehand. Yeah, I <laughs> I, I I will actually respond in a way that. Hopefully it's the same way. We'll see how the intelligence roll goes. <laughs> right. Okay. God, I You're like, oh, oh. <laughs> I literally just respond and. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just... It's like, uh, yeah. Five. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't go very so she, well. She grins uh, and she, uh, she chuckles and, and she says, um, the learning ways of libraries and schools are not unfamiliar to us. And she, um, she, she sort of like, she's sort here of rubbing her, her wrist. Uh, and she, uh, she says, um, as a girl, I served a sorcerer for a time. Bad memories, but it made me sharp. Hmm. Where, where did you serve this sorcerer? The great city in the desert. The jewel of humanity. Oh. Not so much a jewel as a canker, I think. Hmm. And... I look towards Ramus once again. This. Do you know where that city is? No, nope. Ramus. <laughs> <laughs> Put my hand over his mouth. I mean, like, yeah, like you can, you can. He just both blurt out the question. Yeah. <laughs> where is the city? Yeah, yeah. She, I'm like uh, trying to put my hands over his mouth and stuff as I'm saying it. She, uh, she says, "Well, you're both very eager to reach it. It's not far." She turns and, and just looks kind of in the direction. She, uh, she says, um, you'll find the road some days back that way. Follow our tracks. The desert shouldn't have erased them yet. If the wind picks up, go west. There's a road that runs from there. Follow it. She shrugs and she says, you'll find your way there in just a few days. I pull out that map that I've been working on and place it on. I would assume she has something to table or a, mm. a nook whatever place it on the thing and, and kind of start pointing out plots of where she's saying like over here there was a crossroads west of here northwest i believe and from this direction yeah, she, which... she just shakes her head and she's like this map is terrible who drew this a child no this is there not here okay and the oasis is several days this way and so she just kind of like yeah i, I like, like i wet my finger and map. move the sh the charcoal off of where all the d the notes are and start to plot mm -hmm. everything in oh this okay. is great this yeah. is amazing information thank you so much yeah so she she helps you get the map squared away yeah now and as i'm doing that i turn to ramus and ramus that that symbol did you 
perhaps know what it was on the side of the building when we walked in. I've never seen such a thing. I believe it's for... You're a patron of a... of a god. And based on what I heard over at the camp, she referenced something called the, uh... The, the leader referenced the, the... The what of the black sand? It's obviously the uh, father, Ramus. <laughs> the, the father of the black sand. I would assume that that's what... Um. That's what you worship? Your god? She, uh... She says such such human words, God, worship. Our tribe owes its blood to the father of black sand, who lives in the deep desert, who gives us dreams, who drives us forward. We do not worship him. He cannot hear our prayers, but he gives us our power. He flows in our blood, like the blood of the earth, hot below the sand. And she grins and she says, very different from your gods, I think. Fascinating. Is Does he have any connection to heaven or the fountain? She just laughs and shakes her head. She I laugh as long with her <laughs> as if I know why she's <laughs> laughing, but I have no mm. idea whatsoever. I am also smart. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what the laugh is. Yeah. She, uh, she says... Uh, no, heaven has no time for orcs. Hmm. So, are there many priests that were, that serve him, or are you the only one? I am eldest in the tribe. I have acolytes, those who might replace me when my time comes. So fascinating. And he, you say he gives you power. Are you able to conjure miracles and healing and that sort of thing? She, uh, yeah. She says, uh, I can call forth fire, conjure weapons of flame, change my shape, become a beast of the desert. I have not had to do these things in many years. The tribe has been safe. But I could, if need be. Well, you don't have to show off for me, unless you want to, of course. But if you, but that is just that's fascinating. I love learning about other cultures and their religions. Thank you so much. Um, why don't you make a make a persuade check, Ramus? <laughs> Ten. Ten. Okay. <laughs> so she uh, she says, uh, if you hope to live in the desert to get back to your precious city, you might stay and listen. I have stories of the father of Black Sand that could be of use to you. I'd love to hear them. That would be great, she, actually. We both yeah, agree. Yeah, so she, gest she gestures for you, the two of you to sit. Um, now, I, I and have yeah, I think heard, if you... I, I interrupt, uh, I have heard that sometimes this, and I look towards Ramus, and I kind of lean in, sometimes you must imbibe something to enjoy this ritual. Is that, is there any truth to that? And you're, you're asking her? Yeah, yeah. She, she says, uh, there, there are sacred herbs we burn for smoke to help us enter a state of trance, but these are for sacred rituals. She, she squints and she shakes her head and, and she says, uh, I, I hear in your tone of voice the same thing that my children used to sound when they would try to steal these herbs from me. No. They are sacred. By it's all like means. You like, no. By all no means. smoking the magic drugs. Yeah, I say, by all means, my body is a temple. <laughs> and I kind of like, I kind of gesture to my, my dry tortoise skin. <laughs> You're like, hey, your turtle suit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, um, yeah, so she, she invites you to, to sit for like a, a story of the, the, um, the father of black sand. Um, and uh yeah do you do you want to stay and, and listen yeah i will for sure yeah okay good cool yeah so i won't i mean i won't give you the the the, the full like word by word story but she basically tells you uh like a fable about um about how the the father of black sand has always dwelt below the earth unseen but but felt 
uh, about uh, how in the desert wind you can feel his exhalations and how he's tied to their to their tribe that uh, so long as he lives, so too will they and tells you how uh, every tribe uh, has a, a, a patron spirit or group of spirits that empowers them and gives them life going all the way back to the dawn of, uh, of orc kind before before heaven, before man, when orcs uh, ruled kind of over the earth in greater numbers when they were there were massive tribes and the tribes would meet uh, and um, and each of them would share stories about their their god um, and uh, yeah and so you get the impression that this is as much like an, a kind of oral history of the origins of their tribe as it is a story about my god um, so it's both kind of a combo history and and religion lesson okay um trying to think what i would say when she finishes feel free to jump in when you if you want to dan okay wow well, yeah, yeah I mean, I that, that that's fascinating to learn about your culture not quite as cool as you know the god i worship it's <clears throat> quite a different god it has different requirements but i can appreciate your religion and she she kind of curls her her lip and uh, and she she says, uh, as with most civilized men, you have a way with backhanded compliments, Ramus Krill. Oh, I am so sorry. I didn't mean to offend. I, I kind she, of uh, wait for a second, and no one said. He actually did, but it's it's not. It's in jest. Just how he is she shakes as a her, person. She as shakes her head and and she says, um, I will I will acknowledge that you are a priest. Have you have you seen the signs, Ramus Krill? Uh be a little more specific. What? <laughs> she, she chuckles. I've and, seen a lot um, of signs. She says, um, the omens, they have become unpredictable. The future dark, something obscuring the way forward. It is why we are traveling into the deep desert, cutting off our caravan. We go looking for answers. Yes, I, we've, we've come across things that, things that shouldn't be, things that shouldn't be happening that even our gods don't know the answer to. Actually, but we, we tried speaking through one of his rituals yesterday and sh show her the note that came back. Maybe she's seen something of that ilk before. Oh, this? I show her the bureaucratic note from heaven. <laughs> she, she takes it and she, she opens it and, and reads it and puts it back and hands it to you. And she says, this is the way your gods communicate with you? Through the mail? Well... It was mystical mail. It, it appeared in front of us out of nowhere. <laughs> she kind of goes a little wide-eyed like, well, y'all are good. Good, nice religion, guys. It's not my um, religion, ma'am. It's it's his religion. But, I, she, she's well, got like wide eyes and nods. And, so, uh, sometimes it does that, but like something amazing happened the other day while we were trapped in the desert, swirling sands around. I prayed to the gods and I saw a giant star upon a tower guiding me here through the winds and sands this is a sacred place a font of hope from before the time of men built on the bones of some long forgotten creature people have always been drawn to this place as for the reasons they are yours i cannot know a creature you say to wow. not fascinating So uh, yeah, so she uh, when you you kind of are like th over th like thinking over this, and she uh, she says, um, well, however the signs are being delivered, there is a confusion. I have cast bones, red entrails, and gotten nothing. So we go to the deep desert. We'll be here a few days. 
What do you hope to find in the deep desert? Mm, a sign. Something. Closeness with the father of black sand often makes the vision stronger. And and you you see her hesitate a little bit. Like there's some something she's not telling you. Mm-hmm. It it's okay. If if you want to confide in us, we won't say anything. Make a uh, make a persuasion check. Uh <laughs> Can I somehow assist in that by just nodding? Like, uh, nodding and appearing <laughs> trustworthy. Yeah, just be like, we won't say anything at all. <laughs> yeah. Okay. You're, you you put on your sincerest turtle face. Uh, yeah. Sure. Take take advantage on that. Twenty one. Well, nice. Doesn't matter. Okay. She um she says uh, there is more. We have a warrior with us. A young man calls himself Blood of Three Ravens. He's He's been cursed or something. He's hexed in some way, possessed of a terrible fury above that which all our warriors have. He thirsts daily for combat, for battle. We've had to cage him away. The poor thing is ranting and raving when he is awake and sobbing, wailing in his sleep. We hope to find peace for him in the deep desert. An answer. If you would allow us, I'm sure the two of us would gladly look at him. No, I cannot. This shame is only for us to bear. I could not allow outsiders it would not be right. Hmm. Well, as you've said, the signs are all mixed up. Maybe it's time to do something you don't normally do, like trust some outsiders in a situation hmm. that you don't know, usually understand. Mm. I will think on it and confer with my daughter. Now, go. I have to attend to my tribe. And you, you turn and like, you, you can see that there's, um, there's like a woman with like a couple of orca babies kind of waiting outside for you to finish your conversation. Very well. Thank you for the information, ma'am. We should continue our conversation soon. Okay. So the two of you leave. So while that's, while that's happening, uh, Kalimat and uh, Berg, either together or apart, what are the two of you doing? Um, I'm, if, if I'm going to try and get to business and try and, I mean, and not that kind of business guys, um, I was going to say, would you like to make a <laughs> roll? <laughs> Let's get down to biz. No, um, no, I'm going to try and try and or like a, or, or orchestrate. Sorry. <laughs> I'm going to try and, try and procure some uh, like travel to, uh, somewhere or ask if we can come with them or something like that. Uh, our destination being the Brass City or the City of Brass. Okay, and to to whom uh, will you like? To, with whom would you like to have that conversation? Well, obviously, <laughs> I want to uh, talk to Mogak. All right, sure. Yeah. Um. So, uh, yeah. So you, where do you do you want to just go to her tent? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sure. Okay. All right. Um. So you you approach. Um. And uh, there is a uh, there's a human uh, or a human very human looking orc. Um, he uh, yeah he has dark dark skin um, and he's wearing he's wearing the clothes of uh, of, a, of an orc and has maybe like slightly pointed ears um, mm -hmm. and he has his uh, uh, half of his head shaved and the other half is um, in a like a braid uh, down his back and he has um, a pair of swords on his hip and he stands in your way uh, as you walk up to the tent. So he just like stands, puts his arms in front of him, and like looks at you. Um, <clears throat> you know, Orcus, of course. Um, I am guest of Mogak. May I enter and speak? He grins and he uh, he says in common. Um, you speak like an infant. Is this oh, easier? Yes, <laughs> he this is he much... laughs. 
he he laughs oh. and he, he says he says uh <laughs> well mogak was right about you you're handsome but you don't sound too bright or because she's tricky <laughs> i don't and he gestures his face he says i don't have the jaw structure for it either i've learned but i see the way everyone looks at me mm. i can see you are you like my friend berg uh not full blood he uh he kind of scoffs and he, he says that we don't make that distinguish uh it's complicated it's among orcs your blood doesn't matter mm. i'm as orcish as mogok or, or sothe or berg blood is a human concern in valuing us deciding yep. if we're human enough to be sold orcish enough to fight right well as you can see i'm not human he looks you up and down yes I see why Mogok likes you. You're <laughs> exotic. Thank you. Thank you. I'll just say thank you. Um, <laughs> what is your name? Uh, he says, I'm, I'm Kel, fifth husband. Ah, so you are... Uh, she, she mentioned the word harem in Orkish. Uh, are you a part of that? He nods. Yes. I have the honor of being fifth consort to our tribe mother. Ah. I'm father of three of her children. Ah. Excellent. So you are not as as inexperienced as you may look. <laughs> you have a very young countenance. He uh, he he grins uh and he says, "Yes, I'm the pretty one, so don't get any ideas." Oh, I wouldn't dream of it. I I would I'm I'm only curious, as I don't have a tribe or a clan to teach me these these etiquettes. Um, if she were to take me, so to speak, <laughs> he laughs. Would, would that be would that be agreeable to everyone, or is that against the the rules of the caravan or the clan or no, what have you. he uh, he says uh he says if you wish well you you don't understand kalimat if if you wish to mate with mogak you must defeat each and every one of the husbands in battle and he like kind of goes for his sword <laughs> well a battle of words i might win a battle of blades probably would prove more problematic uh, first and second husband, they would be fine. It's third husband you need to watch out for. He's a tough one. Uh, I had to try six times before I got in bed with Mogok. And he, he laughs, he puts his hands up. He says, I, I, I'm taking advantage of your inexperience. It's, <laughs> it's not like that. What, what Mogok wants, she gets. And uh, who are we to argue? That I, I, I assumed it might be something like that. Um, is is she available or is she um indisposed at the moment uh he uh, he says uh mogak is within if you wish to speak with her i do i wish uh, i wish only to to uh bargain for passage or something of the like and he he looks you up and down and he says i don't see you coming with any bags of gold or riches to trade so and he, he's like, you don't have to tell me. And he says, a moment, and goes inside. <laughs> um, so yeah, he, he goes in, uh, and then he uh, he comes back out, um, and he uh, he opens the the tent and gestures, and he he says, uh, tribe mother awaits. And I and I as I, as I walk past him, I kind of I kind of just look at him. Should I be scared? Oh yes, fear for your life, fragile Kalimat. Oh, 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 oh. oh. and I, I continue on into the tent. <laughs> okay, yeah. So you go into the tent, um, and uh, yeah, it's. I mean, it's it's pretty lavish as far as like a desert uh, nomad tribe tent goes. Um, she has uh, on the floor there are like rugs. Um, piled up on top of the tarp that they use to like lay down on the sand. 
Um, there are uh, animal skins. She has several uh, like totem objects uh, near her little like pile of uh, like her seating area near the back. Um, and there is a faint smell of some kind of like incense uh, in the air. And at the back of the tent, as we sort of pan down the tent, we see her and then a bunch of other uh, a bunch of other orcs with her, like four or five. Um, okay. She she's sitting on her kind of little like throne. There's a little. Uh, area between her and then the next set of like pillows where you could sit to address her or talk with her so she's a bit mm. removed from that area um she has there's a, a girl orc um probably in her like early teens uh who's braiding her hair um there is uh there's a, a couple of uh younger like male orcs uh who like also like teenagers maybe one's like in his 20s um and they one of them is sharpening uh one of them sharpening a sword and the other one is uh, knitting or um sewing a like a hole in a, a cloak um mm -hmm. and uh she's sitting cross-legged with a tiny little bright green baby and she's she's nursing the the baby when you come in uh and she looks up uh and she smiles uh and she uh she says um kalimat come and sit Thank you. Yeah, I do so. <clears throat> okay, so you walk over and you, you sit down and yes. uh, yeah, and, I'm not uh, interrupting anything, am I? She uh, she shakes her head. Um, she she says, um, "No." Just like stares at you. I had a chance to to speak with uh, Kel. I believe his name was outside. She uh, she grins and uh, she says. Uh, Yes, a relatively recent acquisition. I've been mm -hmm. thinking it's time for a sixth. He's been new long enough, and I mm -hmm. do crave novelty. She kind of gives you a once over. <laughs> I'm wondering how many would there be a number that was enough for you? <laughs> you don't understand orcs. Never enough, always more. We are known oh. for our voraciousness. That I understand. But uh, I crave experience and adventure and the like, and I can't get enough of that. Hmm. Uh, and is that why I'm... you're out here in the desert? <laughs> Partly, yes. Um, we were involved in a a game being played by those far more powerful than us. And instead of play the game, we decided to destroy the game board instead. <laughs> so we found ourselves thrust into a, a, this desert with no mounts, no food, no water that we were carrying with us in the middle of nowhere and we were lucky enough to find this place, this temple. And mm. we, we found it through very strange means. There was, there was smoke billowing from this direction from far, far away. I could she only nods barely she, make it out. She says, the smoke you saw, the city of brass. We saw uh, it on the horizon some weeks ago. Something happening there. I think and it you is see not my a safe eyes place. get like visibly yeah. wider, like, like, oh fuck, what have I done? <laughs> <laughs> she, uh, she says, not a safe place to go. I think. Why? What has happened? Have you heard? Anything? She shakes her head. No, no traveler is out. Not in a long time. Not since the smoke. You and your friends Could should you? stay here. We're going into the deep desert. I wish we could, we cannot. We have business in the city of Brass. Sometimes <sighs> I think that it is like a stream, everyone drawn to that place. It has a weight, a pull to it. I've never understood it, but my people in cities, we don't get along. I would imagine. It seems like you are more than comfortable out here in the desolate and uh, it seems like you're well taken care of, and you're even raising children here, so. I yeah, her, the, little, the little, like, orc larva in her arm, uh, like, belches loudly 
uh, while you're talking. And she she laughs and, and she she turns over her shoulder to the girl braiding her hair and she says, take your sister, like passes her the, the baby and like fixes her um, her tunic. Um, and uh, and she says, um, so you have your heart set on going to this place. Yes, we have promises to keep, unfortunately, mm -hmm. and most of us in the group are not akin to breaking our words. So, and, and Adam, real quick, did this caravan mm -hmm. have like beasts of burden and stuff? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're a trade caravan, right? Like they're they're going off their trade route. Um, now I, I know again, like this is all kind of like the group knowledge combining all these conversations. But yeah, the caravan has left their trade route. Um, they they've stopped here one last stop, and then they're gonna go out into the deep desert to commune with their with their god, um, mm -hmm. because they've been getting these weird omens. And uh, yeah, so they still have all these like trade goods and stuff. Okay. So in order to keep that word, I'm here to negotiate or to see what we can barter or trade for mounts to get us to our location and possibly food, you know, supplies to Four accompany men. us on our journey. Four men lost alone in the desert with nothing but the clothes on their back. <laughs> What did you hope you had to trade? Well, what do you want? She she turns to the like the the teens or whatever that are with her, and she says uh, in Orkish, um, "Children, find something to do. This is an adult conversation, and not for you." And they they look at each other like, oh geez, mom. <laughs> and then <laughs> and then leave the and then leave the tent. <laughs> um and uh and so she she looks at you uh once they leave, she like looks you up and down and she she says, um, tell me, Kalimad, what what are you? Well, I'm a I'm a traveler. You know um, that's not what I meant. I've <laughs> never seen anything that looks the way you do, and I've seen all sorts of creatures. It's funny that you mention that, because outside of my own family, I haven't seen another of my kind either. I am a child of dragons, long, long down the line. We have been... We are made much the same way as um, orcs are made that mate with other species. It's just a dragon assumes a human form to spend a night with an elf, or excuse me, elf, I forgot, elves are not a thing. Yeah, yeah sure. Um, a a dwarf. Spend a night with a, with a human, a dwarf, an orc. And then the resulting offspring is of my kind. And she, she's like looking at you kind of hungrily and she says, you have a head like a man, two arms, mm -hmm. two legs like a man. And then she stares pointedly uh, in the vicinity of your groin and then looks at you with a raised eyebrow like. Well. It has <laughs> scales. <laughs> Much like what are you roll, roll a roll a persuasion check and then we'll, and then we'll like fade to black on this scene. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, I say it has scales and I I oh, like you know I, pull a point to my head. Can I argue like for a, a performance check instead of a? Oh, that's next. Uh, that's the oh, okay. yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> persuasion first. Pers performance next. Okay, gotcha. All right, all right. So persuasion. Oh come on, plus ten. Let's go. Let's go. There all right. Go. Okay. All right. So. All right, <laughs> let's see how it goes. Let's see what kind of impression you can leave on her. Uh, okay. make, a, uh, make, a, make a performance check. All right. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah, that's a big wow. 26. <laughs> yep, Kali Kalimat can walk the walk. Nice. Uh, all right, nice. baby. So, Bad baby. <laughs> I'm going to roll, I'm going to roll this, this D6 for no reason at all. Oh, a six. <laughs> <laughs> Woo. Interesting. Ooh. 
Oh, for no, for no reason at all. Um, cool. Fans of the original role play will remember a similar role for no reason at all, and what that may yeah. or may not it's, have. Uh, it's important in determined. the GM's toolkit to make roles <laughs> yeah. for no reason at all. Exactly. So, uh, yeah, we we fade out on this negotiation. Um, and, uh, yeah, I mean, I think, uh, in exchange for your, your services, uh, for, for some time, um, she's happy to outfit your, uh, your group with, uh, with the supplies that you need to, to travel back to the, uh, to the city of brass. Um, so while Calumat is occupied, uh, do, doing the heavy lifting, um, Berg, what, what have you been doing? Um, you know, you, you, you have some time to wander among, uh, among these, uh, these, these, <clears throat> I think uh, that's probably exactly what Berg's doing. Is like when everybody like walks away from him, he just kind of finds himself walking through the camp, kind of looking at, okay. at you know everyone in his own past, mm -hmm. which is slightly weird for him because he's does he's very strange for him to be surrounded by orcs. <laughs> like this never happens. Yeah. He's only he's so kind of just observing them. Yeah, we see you, and they're they're not shy either, right? Like we see you kind of like looking around, and you you walk a little bit into the into the group, and then a bunch of orc like kids come running up to you, uh, and they're like, um, like uncle, uncle, can I see your hammer? Why does your arm look like a rock? Did the grandfather of Black Sand give that to you? Where did you come from? What tribe are you from? Uh, and they just like start hassling you, uh, and you just get surrounded by like I don't know, like a dozen like kids between like five and ten. Um, that was a lot of questions. I don't, I don't know where to start. What kind of monsters have you fought, Uncle? You look strong. Can you use that hammer? Where did you come from? Why are you in the desert? Or he just like starts walking away from them slowly. <laughs> uh, and they're like, come back, Uncle. Where are you going? And they just like chase after you. He doesn't do it like a running away, like, like they suck. He's just like, I don't know what to say to you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I think you you get um uh you get you get interrupted, um, or they do, and someone someone comes to to your rescue. Um give me one second, I need a name for this uh, this person. Um so uh there's an orc, uh, an older, I mean I guess your your age, maybe a little older. Uh, orc uh, man. Uh, he's wearing a, a like an apron. He's got a big heavy apron on, um, and uh, he has I think up one side of his face and like up onto his head. He's got his head shaved because half his head is just a mass of like greenish gray scar tissue, and it comes like down one side. Um, and he uh, kids away. He's like, get out of here, you filthy hatchlings. Leave, leave him alone. Come on, and like gesture for them to leave, and then it's like, uh, like run off, and uh, and he says, um, he says, uh, they don't often meet orcs from outside the tribe. I'm sorry if they were bothering you. You know, you can hit them if they're like that. They're used to it. No, I, I don't want to hit them. Just <laughs> too many. I... He, uh, he nods so and he says, questions. probably a wise choice. There are so many of them and orc children are strong. Don't start fights. You can't win. <laughs> so, what? your Berg. Yes. Hmm. And he's like, that hammer. I don't mean to... I know you just got away from the children, but... My name is Uzul, and he puts his hand out, like to yeah, take yours. yeah, or extends his and meets it. Okay. Yeah, uh, so he clasps your wrist and like shakes your hand. And he says, um, "I am a iron worker, a smith of the tribe." Mm. The hammer is something unusual. Where did you get it from? Well, it's odd. It recently changed. Is that so? From what? It was a hammer of... Berg-like thing. Emperor Fae 
if you know the she apology of a poor <laughs> Fae. I have not heard of this Emperor Fay. We have no emperors among my kind. Our kind. C come, drink with me. And he like puts his arm around you like <laughs> it's a foregone conclusion. Like, get over here. Come on, buddy. And Fair goes with him. Okay. So yeah, you go back to a tent where there are a bunch of uh, men and women sitting at tables, eating and, and drinking. And he, he sits you down and uh, he, he pours some, um, some like fermented, some other, some weird beer. <laughs> and and he, he puts it in front of you. Uh, and he says, um, uh, he says, uh, <laughs> it's, it's a hard thing to move through the world without a tribe. I know I have not been part of this one for very long. Served humans for far, far too long. But I'm free now. Where? Where were you before here? Hmm, I served making weapons. Far from here. A hot jungle. Uh, I was part of a... army division. And servant slave. Making swords and armor all day. Mm. Do you like what you do? A good question. It is what I was raised to do. What I did all day for years. Swinging the hammer, crafting steel, these things are as natural to me as breathing, but I did not choose them. So do I like it? I do not know that I ever had a choice, but it is what I do. I am Zul the Smith. It is all. You want to repeat, you repeat what you last said? I couldn't hear you for a second. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He just said, I am, I am Zul the Smith. It is all that I have known. Hmm. You mentioned uh, my hammer. Do you want yeah. to see it? Yes. Sorry. <laughs> Place dirty. <laughs> it's so big because you're a half orc. Um, <clears throat> um, Berg, uh, yeah, brings out the hammer and just like, no, it may be heavier in your hand than mine. And then just like plops it down on the table yeah. nearby. <laughs> like a bunch of other people look at it. Um, and he he like lifts it. You can see his arms straining. He like turns it over. He sets it back down. Uh, I have never seen such a thing. Nor I until recently as i hmm. said it was powerful before but now it has changed you must leave stories behind you everywhere you go your arm this weapon mm. yes Never where are you and your to... friends where are you and your friends going mm. Berg, like, thinks about it. He's like, That's a good question. Away from here. Somewhere. A city. If we can find one. Hoping you all can help. Hmm. He looks over his shoulder into the desert, uh, and he, he says, um, The human city is that way. It will not be hard for you to find your way there, but Sothe says that it is a cursed place, a home to bad omens. Mm. I am no stranger to bad omens. We all bear our own fate. We don't all have a hammer like that to fight it with. <laughs> what? What do you 
are doing here? Why come here? Why with the monk? This is a sacred place. Always has been. The humans built a temple here. Their arcana are misguided, but there is a child's understanding of the power that flows through the world in it. They too recognize this place as a transition somewhere between despair and hope. <clears throat> we stop here before we head into the deep desert. How many are you? Is this, is this all or? Yeah, he, uh, he nods. This is the tribe. 12 families in all. A hundred of us, maybe more. Hmm. I've always wondered what my kind, our kind, do outside of being slaves. Yeah, he, he spits when you say that word, uh, and he says, um, you may think that the shackle or the whip or the harsh words of the master are man and dwarfs' worst weapons against us, but it is not so. It is the way they separate us from our kind, from our history, and from each other. The way they tear us apart that way. That is the injustice. That is the cruelty, not being enslaved. Having our family taken from us. I have found mine. And he, he looks around, and he looks at you, and he says, um, I hope that you will find yours too. Maybe one day. I hope so as well. Berg like clinks his like raises his glass to to clink mm -hmm. the, the drink. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, and so he drains the rest of the the cup, uh, and uh, and he says, um, "Well, if you're going to head for the city, you might as well stay with the caravan for a few days before we leave for the deep desert." There ought to be a feast tonight. There's that, at least. Mm. Feast. And he this grins. Good. Yeah, he grins and nods. Um, and he uh, he says, um, one of the pack sloths is just about ready for slaughter. There will be much meat. And... Uh, the rest, of the, the rest of the table is like, they can hear, they're overhearing the conversation because you're all kind of crammed in together. The rest of the table like yeah. nods and there's a lot of grinning and kind of like, like people getting hype about slaughtering one of these mega sloths and roasting its everything. <laughs> um, and I think, I mean, I think that's the, I think that's the scene that we cut to, right? Is like the, the desert at night, um, the sound of drums, uh, orcish music playing and everyone gathered under this the the big main tent uh sitting at tables eating and drinking and uh the four of you and um uh left alone have been invited to the tribe mother's table so uh mogok and sothe are sitting at opposite ends of the table and then um uh, first, Mogok's first husband uh, sitting is sitting closest to her, um, but uh, Kalimat, you've been given a spot on the other side of the table from from first husband, um, and first husband is like the the dude that you would describe to like baby adventurers to scare them out of adventuring. Like he's a one eyed like dark skinned orc with huge tusks and like uh, covered in tattoos and scars. Um, and yeah, he just looks like just terrifying. Like he looks, he looks like a monster. Um, but he's actually like really quiet, and uh, he's the guy that laughs hardest when you make bad jokes. Um, mm. And so the rest of you are are like gathered kind of to the end of the table um, with uh, with them. Um, and yeah, the rest of the the rest of the tribe is out eating and and drinking. Uh, and there's there's music being played, and uh, the the area is lit by little like lanterns they have hanging. Uh, around the uh, around the tent, um, 
And uh, yeah, and I think that we we sort of fade in on this uh, fade in on the scene, and um, Mogak uh, Mogak is saying to to you, Sully. Um, uh, she's saying, uh, "So you have your heart set on returning to the city of Brass, even after you learn what you did about the danger there, the uncertainty." Who did Mogak say this to? Just the uh, she was saying it to Sully. <clears throat> oh, okay. Repeat, repeat yeah. the line then. Oh, she just says like you—you you have your heart set on returning to the city of Brass. Um, I kind of look at the others for reassurance and say, I, I believe so. Yes. Yes, <clears throat> that is what I communicated to <laughs> her. <laughs> she she says. Uh, <clears throat> Kalimad and I have made a deal. Uh, we'll provide you with food, with water, with mounts to get you back to the city. Very well. Have you been to the city recently? We left uh, some time ago. I'm not too sure how long. We try to stay away from the city of Brass. Too much there. Too much in too small a place. But travelers heading to and from it, we meet with them sometimes, though. And she kind of like scowls, and Sothe kicks in, and she says, No travelers in a long time, maybe a month. The city is closed, I think. No one coming or going. At least, not out into the desert. Hmm. Sully, that smoke we saw, that was the city of brass. Are you sure? That's what Mogak said. So, she, uh, four, four or five, city. Yeah, four or five days ago, I kind of repeat the whole thing as if she hasn't heard it. Four or five days ago, we saw smoke. Is that from the city? Do you know where about north, south, east, west? Um, yeah, Mogak, Mogak says, yes, it's from the city. It could be nothing else. Too much smoke. Uh, you don't see this from a copse of trees burning. Hmm. That's not good. I wonder if it has anything to do with those stairs that they were building. Do you remember that, Ramus? Yes, the go the golem was building some weird stairway thing. Who knows, though? The There's so many things that work in that city. City's so massive, it's hard to know everything that's going on in it at once. May it may be burning in a place that we haven't even been to yet. It's quite true. Although the... And I, I was a, um, I, I like, although the more, and then I, well, we'll <laughs> talk about that. We'll talk amongst ourselves later. Yes. Uh, thank you for the uh, fantastic food. And I <laughs> just like changed the topic completely. <laughs> <laughs> she, uh, yes. yeah, she, she, she laughs. Uh, and, uh, and she says, um, well, you're guests of the tribe. We couldn't let you go hungry, now could we? You have to be strong for your journey. That is true. Is there something we're celebrating? Or is this how you spend every night? <laughs> she, uh, she says, um, we celebrate being alive. Out here in the desert, that is enough. Mm. Merely being able to wake, to see the sun, to walk the hot sands, and to bed with old friends and new and she like grins at you she says um these are all things worth celebrating mm. well i can say i would celebrate that every night as well in fact may i favor you yeah. with a song uh she, she kind of like looks around a little bit and and she looks at sully and, and ramus and berg like Oh, he's, he's <laughs> like, quite, he's, what, is, what is your reaction? He's quite good. Uh, please allow him to sing. Maybe not for your ears, but for most, we enjoy. So she, uh, she, she claps, and the, the, the orcs that are playing the, playing the drum, they stop. Uh, <laughs> and she, she gestures <laughs> well, that, uh, for you I to stand. Like, I didn't ahead. mean that much attention. Now, you, now you've yeah, put and them on then the spot. Every, everybody, all, all the like, people in the, in the little like, feasting area, they all turn to, to look as, as Kalimat stands. Oh, and this is and this is where I live. 
So I look, <laughs> I look at everybody. Yes, gather round, and I pull out my songbook and I look for like an orcas song of celebration or of battle or of you know of jubilation of some sort. Mm-hmm. And I, <clears throat> I clear my throat, and I begin to sing. Okay, let's see how it goes. Can I give him advantage? Oh, uh, did you already roll it? Yeah, I was yeah, going to use it. inspiration, but I forgot. Well, I was going to say, can okay. I give him advantage by casting uh, uh, illusion in the air, kind of as he sings, to try uh, to tire the tail? Yeah, I mean, it's technically like after the fact, but I think I think that makes sense that that's something that you would do. So, how do you? Uh, what does that look like? How do you? How do you back him up? Uh, it's it, it's kind of. <laughs> It's as if I was a Jedi underneath the table, just kind of like fiddling my fingers to make something appear and dance in, in the in midair uh, as it pertains right, to the so song the, that Kali's singing. The chair that Kalimat's in starts to lift <laughs> off the air ground and all the Ewoks start yup nubbing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yup dub. <laughs> yeah. uh, no, specifically, what is the uh, Kalimat, do you, what is the song specifically referencing? Because that'll be what is kind of presented image wise. Um, I think. How about how about like like a like a a hunting song, a song like for we brought home the kill and now we feast on it. Okay. Yeah. Then I think I just kind of spring up illusions of you know a hunting party walking through the the forest and then a giant uh, creature. I don't know what it would be a giant bear or something and kind of a little action sequence between the two and them carrying the bear out of the uh, out of the forest. Or out of the desert, okay. as it were. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. So everyone, everyone and, is really. Everyone, sorry, go ahead. No, I and, and I the the um the way I was speaking in Orcish, like as I was just talking, it all mm-hmm. like falls away, mm-hmm. and when I sing, it comes out like perfect, like perfect pronunciation, real gut, real powerful and guttural, and you know strong voice everything sounds right because this is something i really really try to perfect um as best i can and yeah that's nice. how i sing this okay song. uh cool all right um so you uh you finish the song you finish the song and everyone's like hammering the table and cheering and shouting um but the um but the there's one there's one like a uh, orc warrior who when you finish singing stands up uh and like just sneers at you looks accusingly at uh mogok and then storms out um and a couple of his friends get up after he leaves they get up and they do the same they look at you and then they they leave um and sully and ramus you recognize uh, this as the the warrior that um that was in the um uh in the the room, uh, the tent, when you came in. This is the guy that barged right. out. I, I think I, I tap uh, Ramus on the, the leg. Ramus, it's it's that orc that left earlier. Should we? And I kind of lean in. Should we go speak to him ourselves and see if we can investigate the issue? He he might know where the things, where the guy's being kept. That's what I'm curious saying. about what's happening. What's happening to the guy? I, I kind of look around us. Is there like a quick exit that we could make? Oh yeah, yeah. Like like things have uh, things have changed. Everyone's paying attention to Kalimat right now, so you can slip away without any trouble. Yeah, <laughs> I, I look at Ramus and like eyebrows over to a certain area. Quick, let's go. Let's catch him before he gets too far away. All right, I follow you. Yeah, we we okay. scurry off from the tent. Now, do you want to do you want to sneak up behind them and like overhear what they're saying, or do you just want to walk out after them? Mm, I think we probably just walk out after them. What do you think, Ramus? Mm-hmm. Yeah, none of us are good at sneaking, so. Yeah, and I think okay. if we got caught sneaking, it would be way too suspicious. <laughs> yeah. Sure. So as you as you approach, you you catch the end of one of the other warriors, not the the main one, not the like Mohawk guy. Um, he uh, the, someone is talking to him, and he says, uh, or she says, um, "There's nothing to be done, Togra. You heard what the tribe mother said. We're going into the deep desert, and we'll find a cure." And Togra, this this warrior, is like, I don't want to wait while we dally with these foreigners. And then you, the the group of you, the two of you, come walking up. He yeah. turns and he sneers at you. I, I apologize, sir, but perhaps the foreigners and I motioned to me and Ramus could help you. We are quite capable in addressing 
situations as you just spoke of. He, uh, he scowls. He says, uh, I don't know what either of you are capable of. This one, he looks at Ramus, is like to enslave me as to try to be my friend. And you? I've been to Kachua. I know your kind. Not to be trusted. And so it's, it's him and like a little gang of like four slightly lesser warriors. Um, but they all, I think they all have the same, um, they have a marking of like a bird, uh, like a red bird uh, tattooed or dyed on either their clothes or like on their, like he's got it on his like pectoral muscle, like a bird with its claws outstretched. Right. Um, I'm trying to see if there's any. I would never enslave you. I roll up my sleeve and I show where the scar of where the bracer used to be. I know what it's like to be in shackles. Ha! They enslaved me. He, he says, uh, how? How could you know? You were enslaved but once. A short part of a life. My people have been enslaved since, since your people crawled up out of the mud to do it. You have no understanding of what it means to be enslaved. He like, turns his head from you. Perhaps you're right. We, we have no understanding of what it is to be enslaved, but we do understand how to cure ailments and assess sickness, which it sounds like you have a problem with, or at least someone you know. He looks at you, squints. Say more, Tortle. I'm, I'm sorry? Tell me more. Are you a medicine man of your kind? A healer? An apothecary? What? Uh, I simply just know things. He's the medicine man. But together, we're quite the team. And he, he turns to look at you uh, expectingly. What can you do for me? Hmm? Hmm. I, it's a little dark out here, and I summon daylight spell on me, <laughs> which is blindingly okay. bright. <laughs> okay, so, I mean, orcs are light sensitive, so they all hiss and, like, like look away um and he like squinting looks at you and he says if you wish to anger me you're doing a good job i just wanted to show you that i carry the power of the healing light nothing more than i extinguish it and then and like, i'll uh he blinks and they're all kind of just like ah god that hurt like, rubbing their eyes I, I put out my hand and in my hand i'd like swirl around and there's a i cast prestidigitation in my hand up non-magical trinket which is basically just a little coin that has me and mm -hmm. ramus's head on both sides and it says trust us and i just present it to him <laughs> and like flip it to him <laughs> yeah, yeah okay um cool we'll roll one of you roll persuade with advantage because you're both kind of like t tag team in this this effort i have a zero have ramus two. go ahead okay that'll roll all right uh 12, 12. <laughs> okay all right so he uh he says, um, he kind of looks around conspiratorially and he, he says, uh, fine, come with me. Maybe there's something you can do. And we, uh, we cut to one of the, uh, one of the, the caravan, um, it's like a, like a sled essentially. So they, they pull it across the sand. It's pulled by one of the things, but it's been un it's been unlatched from, uh, from its, uh, pack animal. It's pretty big. It's like the size of, um, like a large, like a large wagon. Uh, you could fit like four or five people in it if it was a passenger wagon, but it has a big tarp thrown over it. And, uh, the group of you come over and you notice that they're all like looking around and like someone is like stays lookout to like watch as you approach it something something's going on here like you yeah, can tell there's some some shadiness being solly i'll be blunt i i yeah. turned to the the guy well, why all the secrecy shouldn't something like this be out in the middle so everyone can help no so they has declared my brother taboo we are not to visit him or speak to him she is afraid the corruption will spread i think the isolation is killing him I don't care what that old woman says. I want to see my brother. And now you can too. And he 
grabs the tarp and <laughs> yanks it away. And immediately the creature inside throws itself against the bars of this cage they've got it in. Uh, you see before you uh, an orc of unusual size. He's like nine, maybe 10 feet tall. Um, huge bulging muscles. Uh, places where it seems his skeleton has grown thorns that spit up through his skin and leave uh, like ragged dripping wounds where they've done so. Uh, his tusks are enormous, like big, long, curled, like a boar's tusks. Uh, and he's grown two big curling horns from the top of his head in the same way blood is dripping down through them. His, uh, his skin is like a deep ochre color. Uh, he's wearing a, a loincloth, um, and uh, he has uh, like claws on the ends of his hands. And he throws himself against the bars, and the cage like tips and then slams back down. And he's like snarling and uh, like pressing his face against the bars, trying to get at you and like reaches out and tries to grab you. Um, and Ramus, um, Togra is standing behind you and just like pushes you a little bit towards the cage. Um, make a, um, make an athletics check. To resist being pushed uh, next to it. Just to resist being shoved towards the cage. Yeah. Good luck, man. Okay. Hey, 18. Let's see how... <laughs> he pushes you real oh, good. Shit. You got crit. <laughs> okay. So he, he gives you a little shove, and then the, the creature inside, uh, Blood of Three Ravens, grabs you and <clears throat> pulls you over, and you can feel his claws digging into you, and he's trying to, like, bite you through the, through the bars. Um, Sully and Ramus, what are you going to do? The, or the orcs are just watching and, like, laughing. Um, he's, he's, like, physically <clears throat> grabbing him and, he's, like, Yeah, by yeah, the neck. so he gets shoved into... into um, uh, uh, Blood of Three Ravens' arms, and then Blood of Three Ravens is trying to bite his head off, but can't fit his like horns and tusks between the bars to like get at Ramus. So he's like grabbing your face and trying to shove your head back into the cage so he can crack I, open your skull and eat your brain. I have an idea, Ramus, but you might have a better one. <laughs> if you'd like me uh, to go ahead with my idea, I will, but it might not be the best. Go. You can go ahead and try yours, and then I'll think of something while you do yours. Okay, I will lean forward, grab Ramus by the chest, and cast Reduce on him, and then I want to pull him away. <laughs> so I want to shrink him down and then pull the fuck away out of okay, the Okay, so how much, how much does Reduce reduce him by? I uh, believe half. Uh, well, yeah, it's half Ramus. in all dimensions. Okay, and its so weight is reduced to one-eighth of normal. Uh, six feet. Okay, so Ramus is now three feet tall. Yeah, he's medium. What did you do to me? God damn it! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, I think I think that the 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 creature in the cage is gonna get a he'll, he'll get a, a shot. He'll get to like take a bite at you uh, as you get pulled away. Um, does being this size affect your armor class or anything at all? Uh, reduction it it decreases his actual size from medium to small, so that might actually give him advantage on that, right? Because don't like you get it, all it does is um, weapon damage deals less damage. Okay. Yeah, everything uh, on, yeah, on I don't this person shrinks. Advantage on strike checks. As long as there's no okay. advantage for him for attacking a so size it doesn't. Smaller. Yeah, he's just gonna try to bite at you as you go. Um, so let's see, let's see if he hits. And I'll use a warding flare to give him disadvantage. Okay. All right. Well, he's not gonna roll any worse okay. than that. Yeah. Like, um, yeah. So his enormous, his enormous jaws just like <laughs> snap shut and then uh sully you you pull him over and now you're holding little three foot ramus like in your arms yeah and um togra togra's laughing him and his friends are just like <laughs> and uh and they look at you and they say uh, think you can help now outsiders it's a very odd way to request help i, I blinked the spell off on ramus and he yeah poofs back up <clears throat> yeah Ow! Oh, that felt weird. That felt weird. I didn't like that. Don't do that again. Please. Oh. That felt weird. I didn't like that. I apologize that I turned up. How long has he been like this? Um, he uh, he says um, mm, since the last great hunt. Was he bitten by something? Where where did this come from? It seems no enraged. The hunt was a. The hunt was a failure. We tracked the purple worm for days, but could not bring it down. We returned with nothing. After that, we became angry. And now this. 
Well, if, if your friends could perhaps hold him down, I could assess the situation and see what I can find out. I don't know about Ramus, but I need to touch this individual. Yeah. Did, did he touch anything? Bring anything back with him that wasn't... Did, did he wear anything? Did he eat anything suspicious? Make a uh, make a persuade check because he's he doesn't want to tell you the whole story. So I want to see if you can get him to. You can do it with oh, advantage. Ooh, 21. 21. You're, you're working together. Yeah, he's got a okay. twenty-one. Yeah, he probably probably won't do better than that. Uh, <laughs> so he he says, um, the only thing my brother brought back with him was shame. He has always been sensitive to his failures. I look at Ramus. Well, shame wouldn't turn him into that. Is there more that you're not telling us? He shakes his head. No, he was not bitten. This is not poison. He didn't fall ill. Hmm. He was always angry. But now that's all he is. I look at the... You said there's like people standing around that were... Looks like guarding this? Uh, no, no. There's there's like his little... Like uh, Togra's little gang came oh, with okay. you. Um, and they're they're guarding so that... No like one comes to someone doesn't rat you out. Yeah. How many of them are there? Uh, like a half dozen. Are they all about of the same size of Togra? Yeah, they're a little smaller. Togra is the, the boss of this little, this little gang of, of warriors. Okay. Uh, I, I turn and, and say, Togra, if you, again, can hold this creature down. I'm, I'm sorry, your friend he holds, down. He holds, his arm, he holds his arms out, and you can see that he's got like... Some healed, but some still fresh, like cuts, like deep, like claw cuts in his in his hands. He says, um, <laughs> I'm strong, but I've never been as strong as my brother. And now all six of us together couldn't hold him. It's why he's in the cage. Hmm. I would, Adam, I would like to make a religion check to see if th there's any records of someone growing horns and fangs and stuff like. Yeah, yeah, sure. 11. Mm. So again, uh, humanocentric mythology. So just keep that in mind. Um, orcs are particularly susceptible to influence of the Mara. Um, they, uh, they care mostly for blood and glory and will exchange their, their, their soul's prize for power uh, readily and easily. And this to you looks like a demon possessed orc. Hmm. Do you smell that, Sally? Yes, the orcs are. They no, not the orcs. <laughs> Something fouler. Hmm. No, my. That's the smell of Mara. He's been cursed. <laughs> yeah, the lightning like strikes or something that makes glass behind us. I, I turn and. Do you know this word? Sir. Uh, he, he shakes his head. No. Hmm. Is it some sort of monster? You know, deal makers, the dark ones that bargain for power. Do you have any tales of these things? No. Some among our kind are given magic by the spirits. Is this what you mean? No, the dark spirits, where everything you deal with them just goes bad and wrong. I do not know of which you speak, priest. Hmm. I'm going to try something. And I kind of like shoot, uh, move everyone out of the way. Uh, okay. And they back up. I don't, and, and I say, I do not expect this to work. So do not expect anything out of this. Uh, I want to cast sleep at level three. So it's okay. 98. And I'm going to see if I can put it to sleep. Okay, sure. Um, here, I'll just do this before I cast. Oh, okay. Never mind. I can just do this. Perfect. <clears throat> wow. That is a really bad roll. What did you get total? 43? Uh, yeah, 43. Okay. Assuming you don't like accidentally knock out any of the other orcs, it doesn't work on him. Okay. I say, hmm. I need to touch him, Ramus, to, to really assess the situation. I need to physically touch him. I do not know how to restrain him. Can, is there, 
Can you stun him, perhaps? Hmm. Let me think if I have anything that could hold him still. Let's see if I have anything. I don't. Uh, I turned to the. Is it Togra? Is that? Togra, yeah. Yeah, I turned to Togra and say, Has he calmed down at all since this has occurred, or has it only gotten worse? When he is awake, he is possessed by a hunger for battle. And when he sleeps, he is haunted by nightmares. Hmm. When does he sleep? When he tires of his bloodthirst. Hmm. Ramus, do you have any ideas? Well, yes. I. There's a few things we could try. A mer magic circle to bind him. A spell to paralyze him, but none of these are guaranteed to work. Hmm. Well, but I even need... if he's human. I would need some time to assess the situation. It will not be immediate, so I don't know if the paralyzation spell would work. Unless it's quite long. I do not know your your tools as they were. Well, if if we were in a more ancient version of our world, it would be far more effective at what we need it to do. But <laughs> the modern iteration of our world is less good at, as it used to be. Hmm. With old person. <laughs> I understand what you're saying. <laughs> uh, can I? I want to make an arcana check on the idea of a, a demon. Uh, specific. What were the specific words, Dan, that you used? Demon. Oh, just Mara pos possessing an orc. Or Would it be, yeah, creature. demon possession? Sure. Okay. 24. Uh, and okay, I'm looking on ways now. to, like, you know, exercise the demons. <laughs> yeah, I mean, sometimes it's just a curse, right? Like, uh, usually the, the, the Mara, they have several tiers of servant. Their best servants are not like this. Their best servants are, like, intelligent necromancers who have made the decision to give up their soul for power, but they still, like, have thought or whatever. This guy if he ran afoul of amara or if he let the mara in by accident somehow uh he could just be cursed so a remove curse spell might be able to free him okay uh i turn and say yeah. ramus have you ever cast a curse away do you have yes such power? i'm i'm very skilled in the removal of curses does but it... it does require me to touch the person is it does it happen at a moment's notice, or does it take some time? It's it's pretty. It only takes about six seconds. Yeah, I mean, all you'd have to do is just reach out and like touch him. You wouldn't have to like hug him or whatever. Okay, it's not. It's it's not like it, you can just literally just like reach out and be like, gah. The power of Christ compels you. Yeah, if you want to do that, you can. <laughs> I, I, I was potentially going to make himself knock himself out, so it's up to you. Okay, I, <laughs> I am I'm going to try. Why oh, you hit yourself? Why oh, you hit yourself? Yeah. I'm going to try to remove the foul taint of the Mara from his person. And I start casting an incantation and okay. run up and touch him through the cage as fast as I can to, okay. All right. to better remove the curse. Uh, so make a uh, make like an attack roll, basically, to touch uh, as if you're doing like a touch spell. Um, so you can roll, uh, add your wisdom modifier uh, and your your proficiency bonus. Can I can I uh, cast minor illusion on the opposite side or perhaps inside the cage to get him to turn his back to Ramus? Right to give Ramus advantage. Yes. Sure. Okay. Yeah. That, that's Woo. what I do. Nice. Well, you don't even know what need for. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, yes, yeah, so he turns. He sees the illusion and just rah, turns snarling and his hand is still like by the edge of the cage and you just reach out and like brush his hand and he howls as if he's been burned and pulls his hand away. Like, and his, his hand, the, the claw is like contorting and you can hear the, the bone like crunching 
and he drops to his knees and he like howls and Kalimat and Berg, you hear this, you hear this sudden like shriek of anger and rage and all the orcs like get up in, in surprise. Um, and Mogok, uh, Mogok and, and so they look at each other, like they recognize that sound and they go running, uh, off in that direction along with several of the, several of the, um, uh, the husbands, uh, I'd say Berg and Kalimat probably, um, probably, I can speak for myself, oh, yeah. but Berg's going to run and <laughs> find out what's going on. Okay. All right. So, uh, Sully and Ramus, uh, you watch the first few seconds of this. Um, Togra falls to his knees, like just like tears in his eyes at his brother's obvious pain. And his arm is, is like twisting. And you can see this effect like spreading through the rest of his body. Uh, there's this like bone crunching and like twisting. And he falls on his back and he's writhing and seizing up. Um, and uh, Sothe and, and Mogak come, come running up. And uh, Sothe says to, to you, Ramus, like, what have you done? He, he was infected by a curse. I've cast a spell to hopefully heal him. And, um, and Mogok says to Sothe, what do we do? And Sothe puts her hand up and she says, it's done. And uh, she's just like, we well, just have to like watch. And so everybody watches as he twists and writhes. But you can see the, the bones sticking up through. They, they start to like crumble and break off. The wounds don't heal, but the spines break away. Uh, his, um, his muscles like shrink. His body like, curls up and, and he gets like smaller. Um, and after a few agonizing seconds that seem like much longer, uh, there is an orc, a big strong orc, but a bloodied and battered orc lying in the cage, like trembling um, and, uh, and and like moaning with pain. Um, and Sothe runs to the uh, runs to the thing and pulls open the the cage. Uh, Togra runs inside and uh, picks his his brother up. Um, and uh, yeah, do you guys want to do anything? I lean towards Ramus, uh, and so a conversation only <laughs> between us happens, and, and say. Make it seem so as if their gods have done this. It would be better for us in the outcome. Can, can, can you conjure a... I can conjure a anything. Brush. What do you need? <laughs> I, I need you to make an illusion of a swirling sand around his body, and then I will heal him with my magic subtly. Very well. Tell me when. And I kind of put my hand like right. this with, with my other hand right next to it. Yeah, okay. and the whole so you, you can actually like cast a spell without there being too much uh, like attention on you because everybody's like shouting and like yeah. kind of like crowding up and like what's happening and, and yeah. Whatever, so. so like my hand is like cupped and I'm just swirling uh, with minor okay. illusion, just swirling sand around it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, and yeah, his, some of his wounds close uh, and he he wakes up. And he says, like in, in Orcish, he looks at his brother and he's like, Togra? Sothe? What, what's happened? And, uh, and, and Togra is like, shh, quiet, quiet. It's going to be okay. And he, he looks up at you, Ramus, like, like, you, you, like he's, he's thankful, like he, you did it, but like also like traumatized and, um, M Mogok says to you, Kalimat, uh, she, uh, she says, uh, well, your friends like to gamble. That was a close one. I kind of like hit mm -hmm. Ramus to speak up. It wasn't you. Make sure you... It wasn't him. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't, wasn't him, by the way. <laughs> and so, so, they, so, so they turns to you, uh, Ramus, and uh, <clears throat> she says... Um, did you do this? It, it wasn't me. Something acted through me. I felt one with the desert for a moment and just felt something I wasn't familiar with. Perhaps I was inspired by the story earlier. Just, I just was compelled to help. Sure, make surely a, it was the father of the sand, I say. <laughs> Like right next to Ramus. Make a deception. Make a deception check. <laughs> Nine. God damn it! All, right. All this build up for nothing. No, that's sure. a good insight though. <laughs> Ooh. Oh, All right. So they looks at you like you liar, but doesn't hold say. On, hold on. Can I? Yeah. Can I? Uh, can I do an insight check as well to see if? 
Oh yeah, of course. Yeah, you can make an inside check to see if Ramus is, okay. is lying. If you can beat, no. okay, there you go. <laughs> so I know that's I know that's a, like a bald faced lie. Yeah. And I look at uh, who who asked the question or who is who is uh, so there? so they was Bird. So <laughs> The mighty god of the desert has healed this man. <laughs> Praise be the black Praise father the of the sand. These mighty winds blow like the Ramus is the god. Yeah, Ray, or Berg's the only orc. He just starts shouting. <laughs> Like praise Jesus! Praise Hallelujah! Down on his knees. God of the sand. <laughs> oh man. Uh, okay. Um, oh, so I, just, I just, yeah, I just want to just just say like, I think we're missing the point of this. Look, he's healed, is he not? She uh, it doesn't matter well, if it came from the gods or came from the sand or. It came from my. She, <laughs> Mo, Mogak, uh, Mogak puts her hand on your shoulder, uh, and uh, and she shakes her head, uh, and she says, um, "Now, now is not a time for words, Kalimat. Take your friends, go back into the temple and rest. I must speak with my mother, with the tribe. Of course. If you need me, okay. that's where I'll be." All right, cool. So the group of you, uh, I guess, head off t together to go and, t and to rest. Yeah. Um, and I think the aftermath of, of that sort of situation, like some some of the orcs believe, like, it's a sign, like the, the father of the desert, like, you know, saved uh, blood, of, uh, blood of three ravens. Um, others are like, those meddling outsiders, they shouldn't have been there. They broke the taboo. Um, but ultimately over the course of the next few days, the, the dominant sentiment is that everyone is happy that, um, three Ravens is safe again, that he's, he's back to the way he was. Um, he seems like he needs to recover. He's pretty messed up. Um, but they do, uh, they do like recognize that he's been healed. Um, is there anything that the group of you want to do particularly before you, before you head out to the, to the city? I would love. You know where you're going. Berg, Berg would like to preach the gospel of the God of the Sand, if that's cool. Okay. Whatever. Yeah. yeah. No, he's... I, I would love to investigate and ask. You know what happened? What did you talk to the Mara? Why? Why did this happen? Uh, to the person we just healed. If that's yeah. something we can do. Um. Yeah. I don't. I don't know that they would like let you let us near him. Near him. After, okay. after what happened. Yeah. All right. That makes yeah. sense. And during the time, um, I would like to try to just meditate and see if I can commune with whatever creature is here to see if right, it the, the, like the presence yeah um, like if it drew me here or was it the yeah, gods I like, think um, make a make a religion check okay 15 okay um, yeah you I think you you try actively to like meditate and get in touch with whatever is here but whatever it is it's it's like the echo of something right like you it's like trying to talk to someone but you're you're getting its message much too late and all you do is like you wake up in the morning from a dream you can't remember feeling like purpose feeling drive but you can't place it um there's no there's no communing with the thing but you can feel why this place is sacred like you can see why people would come here mm -hmm. okay I I know, Kalimat, you want to do something, and then I'll I'll speak. Yeah, I, I wanted to to um, see if I could uh, like, would it be possible? Would it be feasible for me to like sneak in, sneak to uh, um, Mogak's uh, tent? Uh, like with her not there, or like without being noticed? Because I I mean I just want to leave her a present. Oh yeah, of course. Yeah yeah, you can make a roll for that. Um, okay. I mean, I think there's no, there's no real, actually, no, I do, I do want to find out if you, if you succeed. So make, yeah, make that, make that stealth check. 22. Nice. Okay. Let's see how I do. Okay. Yeah. You, you slip unnoticed past the, uh, past the sentries. Okay. Uh, and what, what do you, do we get to see what you, what you leave for her? Yeah. I, I just, uh, um, I take 
uh, I, my, I take out my my deck of tarot cards. I have mm. One that I one that I use to give people like certain cards. Um, mm -hmm. And the funny thing is, I actually looked this. I was like, which card should I leave? And the <laughs> in my little stupid book, it's the Empress card starts with. Pregnant with possibility. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. So I grab that and I kind of, I kind of um, rub it on the most uh, scent leaving, like on my, like my body. Mm -hmm. your that has my scent on it. Like, I mean, I think yeah. you have, you have like, uh, like glands that create ozone or whatever in your, in your throat, right? So you, you, you have go. that kind of like electric smell. Totally. Yeah, yeah, that's like a thing. It sounds gross yeah, and weird, it. but it actually is true. Just conjure up a little puff, just put it on mm -hmm. the card, and then like leave it on like a chair or a pillow or something. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So she has uh, she has a, a token of your of your affections, um, and yeah, I think I think we probably we probably then unless anyone has like a specific thing to do. Um, we see a short scene of the group of you saying goodbye to, to the, the orcs, uh, left, uh, left alone tells you, Sully, like, um, I'll be going to Kachua. Uh, I don't know how long I'll be there, but if you're ever, if you ever find yourself in the vicinity of the fortress that walks, look me up. I'll be the only earth genasi in a turtle city. Um, and, uh, and I think that I, you, I will say you, like, good ways. luck, my friend, and also tell him like the the proper way that I know how to, to greet a desert uh, turtle instead <laughs> right, of you, the improper way. It. Yeah. <laughs> Only because he, you know, he fucking gave us shelter for two days. I feel pretty bad about that. Mm. Um, okay, cool. And then I, I think it's also worth noting me and Ramus probably devise a way to make sure that the orcs don't give in to the Mara again and like ways to like see the Mara or see that they're approaching a deal with the Mara or something like that. So it doesn't happen. I, I, I think we approach the priest and like tell her she needs to preach to the tribe about the dangers of the Mara. So this never happens again. And like explain to her what happened. And... Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Okay, cool. Um, well, let's see if that message sticks. The like warning about the Mara. Um, let's have you make a one last religion check. Maybe you make a like a short sermon or something. Uh, so they allows you to speak with some of the, the, the people. Do you want us to both do it or how you, I got a seven, Dan, and plus seven. Uh, okay, I'll help you then. Okay. Okay. Twenty-five. Twenty-five. Okay, cool. Yeah. So it, it, it seems like it sticks. You warn them, like, watch out for, for these things. This yep. might be what happened to your, your uh, tribesmen. Yep. Um, and it, it does seem to hold. Like they'll they'll remember that part of the encounter with you. Nice. That a, a, cool. tor a turtle and a human came to town and <laughs> got rid yeah, of the exactly. demons. <laughs> it's like it's like what um, uh, Uzel said to to Berg, right? Like you must leave stories behind everywhere you go. Uh, and so this this tribe, the the children, the children of the black sand, they'll they'll remember what happened the the day they they ran into the adventurers at the fallen tower. Yeah. Um, cool. Cool. And so the, yeah, the last the last thing we see, I guess, is the the group of you headed. Uh, out into the desert with the slowly rising column of smoke in the distance. Yep. And uh, and we'll we'll have to we'll have to find out what happened in the city of Brass when we tune in for the live show. The live oh, show. Yeah. The live live oh, show. The live live Wait, show. I gotta work on the brand. Like people are just like, well, aren't you streaming live right now? Like, <laughs> yeah, this is live, but that one's live like capital L. You just call it IR, the IRL show, I guess. That's no, because then, then we're just, I mean, that's an entirely different it, thing on Twitch. Oh, God. Twitch ruined it's the, the show name IRL. Full just full <laughs> cammed. <laughs> yeah. Why don't we'll you call it, it, why don't you call it the real dice show? Just the real, <laughs> get a roll with real, real dice. dice show. <laughs> yeah, dice maybe show. so. Maybe so. I don't know. The we'll figure ones. it out. Anyways, let's do some <laughs> shout outs and uh, go do a little bit of a post show. Uh, but Zeke, why don't you, uh, why don't you start us off? All right, man, I'm so excited for the goddamn live show. I'm so excited to roll real dice. Oh, to have to be sitting around a table again. It's going to be so fantastic. I can't tell you how excited I am. That was six years for me. Mm. Like every other every Saturday or every other Saturday doing that. Just every Saturday, just fucking getting in a table and role playing, man. 
So excited. I hope to see you guys there. All of you guys there. Um, but my name is Ezekiel the third. I want to give a big thank you to uh, Dan, Max, JP, and Adam for making this always the highlight of my week. And if you if I if we could role play every day, I would. Um, <laughs> but uh, I'll be back tomorrow for drop frames at 10 a.m. Pacific. And then after that, probably uh, probably going to have to do a broadcast because I'm going to be gone for several days uh, during uh, this whole sojourn to San Antonio to play Dungeons and Dragons. But I usually broadcast at noon Pacific every day that I'm not doing those things. So follow me on everything is Ezekiel underscore III, Twitch, Twitter, and YouTube. Thank you. That's it. Awesome stuff. Uh, Mr. Gassy Mexican, will we see you in full orc attire this weekend? A sexy orc. Yeah. No. We're going to go to the, um, the Halloween store again and get some sexy orc costumes. Yeah, if they have any sexy orc, you know, attire yeah. at the Halloween store, then, you know, maybe. I'll look, I'll look for some. I doubt there'll be any. Uh, yeah. There won't be any sexy cat attire this time, and that's, you know, I know that's a bummer. Everybody's probably going to be disappointed about that. But you know, I'm super stoked for the new, their, the new show, the live show um live live show it's gonna be great having zeke there too i haven't uh rp'd with him in person i know he's gonna as you can see he's jazzed about it i'm excited for like just the energy uh at the table with everybody there and of course zeke being there but uh yeah i do uh all the variety castings and youtube stuff uh if you guys want to check it out um I'm, I'm just gassing mexican on everything but i'm excited for for the next time this this is a really good episode. I think a lot of people in chat um, were really, really happy with it. I'd be surprised if we didn't see some art come out of it too, because some really funny and, and did, poignant moments. Did you see? Have, have you seen uh, Mer Merrick Bentuzzi's little comics? Yeah, yeah. Of the yeah, donation. Yeah, yeah. Holy shit, that's <laughs> it's so funny. good. Yeah, <laughs> it was uh, really good. But yeah, stokes for the uh, the next show, and uh, yeah, thanks again to everybody involved. Awesome stuff, uh, Mr. Dan's Gaming. Some shout outs, please. Uh, hi, I'm Dan's Gaming slash Dan's Gaming on Twitch, YouTube, Twitter, easy to find. Uh, variety streamer currently playing through Kingdom Come Deliverance. Interesting game so far. Uh, this is a great show. I loved. I love that we didn't have any combat, and it was still super fun to do. And uh, uh, the new system makes it so much fun. I can't wait for the live show on next Saturday because we have to roll real dice, which I love to do. It'll be a lot of fun for sure. Uh, Adam, we need to do shout outs, and we need to do goals as well. Yeah. So let's yeah, do, yeah. do some shout outs um, and we'll talk I, our goals. Yeah, my shout out. My shout outs are real, real quick. Um, I was gonna do uh, I was gonna do some GM prep for the live show tomorrow morning, but I don't want to run it at the same time as drop frames. So I'll probably do that stream after drop frames is done. So y'all don't cool. have to miss either of those things. So we'll do a little bit of a little bit of GM prep for the live show over at twitch.tv slash Adam Coble. You can find me on Twitter at skinny ghost, and you can find me in JP's house in a couple of days. <laughs> doing more of this because it's court of swords or die these days. So let's give out some experience points. Yay. Yeah. So, uh, Berg, 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 P. you, uh, One you second. get some experience. You completed two of your goals. You reattuned to the hammer, uh, which is worth for you 2,200 experience. Ooh. So you get 2,200 for that. And then you get another 1,500 experience for learning something meaningful about orcish culture. Yeah. 30, so that's 3,700 total. Yeah, today. Yeah. Okay. So we'll need two, two goals from you. Um, and rather than make you necessarily think of them now, uh, just get them to me before the live live show so we can review them then. Um, yeah, yeah. We'll go from there because we'll have lots of time. We might do goals twice during that show. Yeah, I we'll think see. after four hours, that would be a good idea. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Ramus, uh, Ramus, you learned about orc religion, uh, so that is worth uh, fifteen hundred experience for you. And uh, you found out where you were, which is worth seven hundred experience. Okay. Um, so you've still got uh, find out if the star guided me here. It's up to you if you want to keep that one. Or I feel like now that you all know kind of what you're going into, there's lots of opportunity to write brand new, brand new goals. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Sully, Sully Hoffa. Let me just adjust my calculator here. Uh, so Sully, you found the smartest orc and learned something from them. Yep. That's worth five hundred. Uh, and I, I, I believe technically you did find out where you were before Ramus did. I believe you did it, beat Ramus. It was almost. Yeah. 
Only because I realized it faster because of my mind, but it was at the same time. <laughs> but intellectually, yeah, exactly. I realized mere moments <laughs> faster than Ravis Krill. That's how so. That's out. worth a thousand. That one's worth a thousand experience for you. Uh, you said fifteen hundred for the other one. What, what was the other one? The uh, the other one was uh, the smartest. Five hundred. Oh, five hundred. Okay. Yeah, that gotcha. one was five hundred. Yeah, it was just an easy one. Gotcha. Uh, okay. Um, and then Kalimat definitely negotiated with some orcs. Yeah. Negotiated uh, so those, hard. Those negotiations were worth a thousand experience. Nice. Um, and like, like chat pointed out, uh, nice, nice non, non lateral thinking in terms of like, well, it's proving very difficult to find another dragonborn. So I'm just going to make some and then I'll meet them. Problem solved. Yep. <laughs> uh, so you, you still have uh, find out what the prisoner was and learn what the smoke on the horizon is. Um, yeah. Uh, now, do you no, think I... that you do you want to clear the smoke on the horizon one? Yeah, it's my you know, it my was, actual was... wording is find out what the source of the smoke is and it's at okay. the Brass City. Yeah. Okay. All right. So that was uh, another thousand for you for that one. Okay, cool. Cool. So everybody has one currently and two empty slots. Yep. Um, I'm going to be planning the first arc of the the IRL live live table show. Uh, I'm going to be planning it around some non necessarily like goals related stuff. But please feel free to fill in your goals uh, whenever you uh, whenever you get a chance, and we'll we'll confirm them before we start the show. Sounds good. All right, that's going to do it. We'll see you guys this upcoming Saturday uh, at one o'clock Eastern for a special eight hour role play live live show so hope to see you then mm -hmm. uh, if you want to watch our post show video we're going to go do so over at patreon.com slash role play that'll be up in about 30 minutes eh, probably 30 minutes to an hour uh, and you can also find mp3s there as well if you missed any of the episodes if you want to get caught up uh, we'll have all the vods out so don't worry about it. if you missed any part of this episode that'll be out before most likely before friday um, so you can get caught up uh, until then though thanks everyone for watching and we'll see you guys uh, at the live show we're out bye bye